Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tish. I don't know if it's because the sun's been shining in London and to be honest, the sun just brings the best out of me, but this week I have felt so creative and I wanna share a few little ideas that I came up with in my week with you guys. As always, I'm gonna be focusing on using as many seasonal local vegetables as possible and I'm gonna share with you some really exciting ways that you can venture out into the world of local and seasonal food. So we are in such a beautiful phase right now where we are transitioning to more light, spring, kind of vibrant vegetables. You're gonna notice a lot more green type of vegetables popping up and over the next few weeks, over the next few months, things are gonna get so exciting. I love this kind of build up to summer and yeah, I'm obviously very excited about that. So feel free to mix and match the bowls as you please. Take an element from one, take an element from another, put it together, do what feels right for you in your kitchen. I just hope this sparks some ideas. So if you create any of the bowls that you're about to see or you take inspiration from any of them and you take a picture on Instagram, please tag me. Like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel and let's get straight into the first spring seasonal bowl. Let's go. So the first bowl idea is a curry, roasted chickpea, swede and potato mash and wild garlic pesto bowl. As always, I soaked my chickpeas from dry overnight and I added a little bit of salt also when I was soaking them. Once the chickpeas were cooked the next day, I um, patted them dry with some paper towel and then added them to a bowl, followed on by some black pepper, some curry powder, paprika, oregano, onion seeds, and some olive oil. I am really obsessed with onion seeds at the moment. Um, this is the main ingredient that just gives these chickpeas just a really, really yummy, delicious taste. So I made sure all of the chickpeas were coated and I placed them flat on a baking tray and into a hot oven of around 200 degrees for around 25 minutes until the chickpeas were golden and crunchy. So one of my favorite things about this time of year is wild garlic, otherwise known as Ramsons. It is basically garlic in the form of a leaf and there are so many things you can do with it. One of my favorite things to do is to prepare a pesto. So to prepare a really simple wild garlic and parsley pesto, I added some wild garlic, followed on by some parsley, some olive oil, pink salt, and some lemon juice. So I just processed everything until uh, it reached my desired consistency. So feel free to work with the pesto if you wanna add some sunflower seeds or some pumpkin seeds to give it a little bit more texture, do that. So to prepare the potato and swede wild garlic mash, I peeled some potatoes and I also peeled some swede and I just chopped them into big chunky pieces and I placed them to boil in some boiling salted water. My aim was to get them really Really soft so they're easier to mash. Once I drain the water I place them into a bowl followed on by some Dijon mustard, some black pepper, a lot of black pepper in this potato mash and then I just mashed everything. So I finally chopped some wild garlic, more wild garlic, and then I threw that into the mashed potato bowl, followed on by a swirl of olive oil, and I gave everything a good mix. So next to prepare were the spring greens, which is a, like a cabbage, it's a cabbage. Um, it's just a lot lighter, and it has kind of like a sweet taste. So it's perfect for spring. I simply steamed the spring greens, and then I moved on to preparing the purple sprouting broccoli. So to prepare the purple sprouting broccoli, I grated a lot of ginger because this is gonna be the main element of the broccoli. And I heated some coconut oil on a pan and threw in some shallots, some garlic, and all of that ginger that I grated, um, as well as the purple sprouting broccoli, of course, and some tamari, and just mixed everything on a medium heat, uh, cooking everything until the broccoli's kind of soft, but still has like a nice texture to it. Once the purple sprouting broccoli was cooked, I added some sesame seeds, and then it was time to plate the first bowl. So I placed on the potato and swede wild garlic mash, followed on by the steamed spring greens, the ginger purple sprouting broccoli, the crunchy curry roasted chickpeas, and then I topped it all with the wild garlic and parsley pesto. And then I felt like it needed something a little extra, so I cut up some avocado and placed that on top. 
So the second recipe has most of my favorite ingredients like on one bowl. It's an arami slaw, miso and tahini, dressing, roasted squash and some red quinoa. So I began by chopping up all of these spring vegetables with exception of the red pepper because that's not in season but I just wanted some like sweetness and crunch. So I chopped all the ingredients which included cabbage, red peppers, carrots, red onions and some parsley. So arami is a Japanese sea vegetable which has a really delicate and subtle taste but it still adds some flavour. I love adding it to spring and summer salads. So to prepare the arami I washed and rinsed it and I placed it in a bowl with some warm water and set it aside for around 10 minutes to soak. So to make the miso and tahini dressing, I did everything by eye. I just added some tahini to a bowl. This is quite a thin, light tahini. Um, I added some miso some apple cider vinegar, some tamari, some cayenne, a little bit of raw honey, some fresh ginger, and then I gave everything a good mix, adding a little bit of water bit by bit just to reach my desired consistency. So I threw all of the chopped raw vegetables into a bowl, and then I placed on top the arami, and then it was time to place in the miso and tahini dressing, and um, I gave everything a really, really good mix. So over the next few weeks you'll notice that there won't be as many squash available so there'll definitely be like fewer varieties and this is the one that I found in my local market. I think it's a crown print squash. So I just peeled and chopped it into like half discs and then I placed the squash into a bowl followed on by some black pepper, onion seeds, cumin seeds, paprika, some coconut oil to make everything crunchy in the oven. I um, placed it flat on a parchment lined baking tray and put it into the oven for around 25 to 30 minutes until it was golden. So then it was time to plate the second bowl. So I placed on the red quinoa followed on by the roasted squash which was um, so sweet by this point and the arami salad and of course a little bit of avocado and some black pepper. So the final bowl is a beluga lentil salad with roasted leeks, a beetroot yogurt dip, and a couple of other extras. So I soak some beluga lentils overnight. They cook really, really easily. You don't need a pressure cooker or anything. They'll become soft um, just in a normal saucepan. Also soak some quinoa, which I put on to cook. So once the quinoa and beluga lentils were cooked, I placed them into a large bowl. And I chopped up some red onion and some fresh parsley. I placed the red onion and fresh parsley into the bowl, followed on by some tamari, some black pepper, some lemon juice, some raisins, some sunflower seeds for some extra crunch. What I did is took some sunflower seeds and I placed them flat on a baking tray, placing them into a hot oven for around 15 minutes until they had like a nice golden tint. So I mixed the beluga lentil salad up. So I actually placed in a little bit of olive oil, of course, and then I mixed everything well and I just set the salad aside. Beetroot is something that grows all year round. It is actually probably one of my favorite vegetables. It has a very earthy taste. I think a lot of people are kind of scared to try beetroot or to try and incorporate into their meals. But once you have tasted a real beetroot, you will be sold and there's no going back. So to make this beetroot yogurt dip, I placed some chickpeas into a food processor, followed on by some garlic cloves, um, some grated beetroot, some dried dill, some pink salt, lemon juice, some coconut yogurt, which I used a brand called Koyo, some olive oil and some black pepper. And I just whizzed everything up. To be honest, I wasn't happy with the consistency um, from the food processor. I just had in mind that I wanted it to be really smooth. So I transferred it to my Vitamix and then made it really, really smooth. So to prepare the roasted leeks, I washed them very, very well. So I chopped them into pieces lengthways and I placed them into a large bowl with some dried parsley, dried thyme, red chili flakes, some garlic powder, some pink salt and some olive oil. And I placed them on a baking tray, popped them into an oven. They will cook really, really quick in about 10 minutes until they were golden and soft, bursting with flavor. It was then time to plate up the last bowl. So I added the beluga lentil salad, followed on by the roasted leeks. Um, I added some rocket and some plantain that I had. 
and then of course the delicious beetroot yogurt dip and then I had a little bit of the miso tahini left over so I drizzled on um, some of that dressing on top of the greens. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up, comment, like, share, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys very very soon. See ya, bye!